Hello student, welcome to EPG Part Sala. I am Dr. Viswanath Tiwari from Central University of Rajasthan. Today I am going to talk about the module that is Zeta Screen and Total electrico Electrochemical Potential, Helms Hold Equation and its correlation with Debye Heckel theory. And this module has been taken from paper Membrane Biophysics. The permeable membrane separates ion of opposite charge and there is a transmembrane electrical gradient that is known as membrane potential. This membrane potential produces a force of, of oppositely charged ion movement that increases membrane potential and derive ion movement that reduces membrane potential. Thus, the direction in which charged solute tend to move spontaneously across the membrane depend on both the chemical gradient and electro electrical gradient across the membrane which together known as electrochemical gradient because they consist of electric as well as chemical gradient. There are other potential which are also related to the membrane that include zeta potential, strain potential. So, in this module we have discussed the different potential that is related to the membrane and this module is divided into different sections. First we will have introduction and then we have total electrochemical gradient, then we have zeta potential and its Helmholtz equation, then we have strain potential, then we will discuss the relation between zeta potential and debye Herkel approximation and then we will discuss the mathematical expression of zeta potential and in the last we will discuss the strain modification of diffusible double layer. So, cell membrane as we know migrates molecules and it is having the potential. So, cell membrane maintain a small voltage across the membrane in normal as well as in resting stage. In the resting stage inside of the membrane just take a membrane that is nerve cell membrane is negative with respect to outside. So, inside of the membrane is negative and outside is positive. So, membrane potential is the voltage difference between the inner and outer part of the membrane while the physiological resting membrane potential in most of the cell varies between minus 20 millivolts to minus 90 millivolts depends on the other channel activity present in the cell such as potassium channel and specific cellular properties. The voltage or resting membrane potential arises because of the different in the difference in the concentration of electrolyte such as potassium, sodium and different permeability of membrane to different type of ion such as some membranes are more permeable for potassium than sodium. So, dynamic changes in the membrane potential is response to the stimulus that is called action potential. So, after action potential cell membrane back to its resting potential and for measurement of the cell membrane potential reference point is always outside the cell. So, the membrane is having negative charge based on the difference in the ion movement. After stimulus, we have action potential and again the resting potential is generated. So, what is total electrochemical potential? So, when ion of opposite charge are separated by a permeable membrane, there is a transmembrane electrical gradient, a membrane potential are represented by Vm and it is expressed in millivolts. This membrane potential produces a force of opposite ion movement that increases v Vm or membrane potential and driving ion movement that reduces Vm. Thus, the direction in which charged solute tend to move spontaneously across a membrane depend on both chemical gradient and electrical gradient across the membrane. These together known as electrochemical gradient. 
For example, if you take the mitochondrial inner membrane, the movement of the proton created charge difference and pH difference. So when pH difference is created, it is chemical gradient. When charge difference created, it is electrochemical gradient. When you take together, they will create electrochemical gradient. And this electrochemical gradient is also important in terms of producing energy for the membrane. So this behavior of the solute is in accordance of the second law of the thermodynamics, which states that molecules tend to spontaneously assume the distribution of greatest randomness and lowest energy. If the chemical potential is same in both regions, species will occasionally move back and forth between the two regions. But on average, there is just a much movement in one direction than another. Then there is a zero net migration or diffusion equilibrium. That means diffusion equilibrium only occur when chemical potential of both the region are same. Moreover, when there is a tendency of, of a molecule to diffuse from one region to another, then there is a certain phase free energy, repeat, then there is a certain free energy released by each net diffusing molecules. This energy, which can sometimes be responsible for production of the energy and free energy per mole, is exactly equal to the electrochemical potential differences between two regions. As I told that this electrochemical gradient or differences in the chemical potential across the membrane will produce delta G. So electrochemical potential is a mechanical work done in bringing one mole of an ion from a standard state to a specified concentration or electrical potential. According to the IUPAC definition, it is a partial molar Gibbs energy of a substance at a specified electric potential where the substance is in a specified phase. Electrochemical potential can be expressed H. You can see this equation mu1 is equal to mu1 plus ZIF phi where mu1 dash is electrochemical potential of a species I in joule per mole. Mu1 is a chemical potential of a species I in joule per mole. Zi is a valency or charge of the ion I. F is a Faraday constant and phi is a local electrostatic potential in volts. In the special case of uncharged atom, the charge is going to be zero, then electrochemical potential is equal to chemical potential. Therefore, electrochemical potential, if as a biologist we have to take example, just consider same proton movement in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So, movement of the proton will create two gradient. One is chemical gradient, which is, is represented here by nu i. This chemical gradient is created because of the charge difference of the proton. Similarly, there is a charge difference, and that charge difference created electrical gradient, which constituted by Z i because of the charge of ion, Faraday constant, and local electrostatic potential. So, the electrochemical potential constitute chemical potential and electrical potential. So, if anyhow, if you have uncharged ions, then electrical potential does not exist. So, electrochemical potential is equal to chemical potential. But if anyhow, if you changes, create changes in such a way that only electrical potential exists, but no chemical potential exists, then electrochemical potential is equal to only electrical potential. Electrochemical potential is important in biological processes 
that involve molecular diffusion across the membrane, energy production, in electroanalytical chemistry, and in industrial applications such as battery and fuel cells. It represents one of the many interchangeable form of potential energy through which energy can be conserved. In cell membrane, electrochemical potential is the sum of chemical potential and membrane potential and it is important for electrochemical potential production either in the photosynthesis, either in the electron transport system, either in any other membrane functions. Along with the electrochemical potential created across the membrane, there are other potential which is also created such as zeta potential and strain potential. First of all, zeta potential. So, zeta potential is a parameter characterizing electrochemical equilibrium on interfaces. It depends on the properties of the liquid as well as properties on the surface. It plays an important role in the theory of aggregative stabilized DLVO theory, which is also named after the different scientists such as Boris, Lewis, Avest, and Overbeck. So, electrostatic repulsion between particles depend on the value of zeta potential. Higher the zeta potential on the membrane, stronger the repulsion and more stable the system becomes. For instance, high zeta potential of fat droplets in the milk prevent them against collisions. Reduction of it due to the addition of acid would lead to the cheese formation from collisions droplet. In the late 1980s, numerous membrane researchers had investigated the determination of membrane electrokinetic parameter utilizing the Helmond's Somlowski equations, with the result being expressed in terms of membrane zeta potential. Zeta potential is a property of an electronic structure that are usually built up at interface or double layer. According to the fundamentals of collides and interface science, the reason for the formation of relaxed double layer is non-electric affinity of charge determining ions for a surface. This process leads to the buildup of a electrically surface charge, yeah, electric surface charge. This surface charge creates an electrostatic field that then affects the ion in bulk of the lipids. This electrostatic field in combination with the thermal motion of the ion create a counter charge and thus screen the electric surface charge. The net electric charge in this screening diffusion layer is equals in magnitude to the net surface charge but have the opposite polarity. As a result of complete structure is electrically neutral, the distribution of electric potential in the DL, DL means Debye length, is shown on the figure which is in the next slide below the positively charged surface. As you can see in the figure, the membrane is having positively charged particle inside, the surface is negatively charged, which create the negative charge membrane potential during resting stage. And if you see the electrolyte present on the surface of the membrane, they will create different planes. So first plane is strain plane, which is present very close to the membrane. 
and if you see electrolyte away from that steam plane, you will find there is a slipping plane and the layer which is present between membrane to steam plane is steam, known as steam layer and the membrane and slipping plane have the distance that is known as zeta layer or they are responsible for zeta potential. One more thing if you see that if you are moving away from the membrane there is a Debye length. So when you present close to the membrane we have high electric potential. When you move away from the electric, uh, when you move away from the membrane, the electric potential decreases. So you can say that electric potential of the membrane surrounding the membrane decreases directly proportional to the Debye length. As you have seen in the figure, that electric potential decay almost exponentially, which allowed introduction of Debye length. As estimate of DL thickness or diffusion layer thickness, electric potential drop by approximately 2.7 times at the distance from surface that equals to the Debye length. Debye length depends mostly on the ionic strength. It is approximately 1 nanometer at the ionic strength 0.1 molar and it increases as a reciprocal square root of ionic strength or you can say electrostatic electrolyte concentration. For example, 10 nanometer if the ionic strength decreases from 0 0.1 molar to 0 0.001 molar. So you can see the Debye length shift from 1 nanomole to 10 nanomole if ionic strength changes. There is a another characteristic distances within DL location of a slipping plane associated with tangential motion of liquid related to the surface. The liquid underneath of a slipping plane remain attached to the surface. The electric potential correspond to the slipping plane is zeta potential. And it is measured in millivolt and cannot exceed 100 millivolt in any case. So, after zeta potential, there is another potential which is also associated with the membrane and that is known as strain potential. So, you can say that there is a one more plane located even closer to the surface, some of the counter ion might specifically absorb near the surface and makes the sublayer that is known as steam layer. The electric potential on external boundary of steam layer versus bulk electrolyte is referred as strain potential. The electrical potential difference between the bulk potential and the surface is called electric surface potential. The outer part of screening layer is usually the diffuse layer. There is a thermodynamic justification, but scientists think a more comprehensive reason is kinetic. The surface charge ion are assumed to be fixed to the surface that is immobilized and they cannot move in response to any external disturbance. In contrast, the strain ion in principle retains some degree of freedom and almost as high as ion of diffusible layer. After discussion of total membrane potential, zeta potential and strain potential, now we will discuss how we can calculate the strain potential and how we can calculate the zeta potential and what are the different theories given for it. In general, case of an electrolyte mixing, there is a no analytical solution that relates surface charge with the zeta potential or strain potential. In real life, application zeta potential is usually used to estimate the strain potential and the main characteristic of electrostatic repulsion preventing particle aggregation. 
the calculation of zeta potential from parameter measured by zeta potential analyzer require appropriate theories. There are two important asymptometric cases where analytical theory exists. The most known is the case of a thin DL, thin diffusion layer you can say, which correspond to particulates with DL that are much thinner than particle radius. The most majority of aqueous dispersions satisfy this condition except for small or very small particles and low ionic strength media. Calculation of zeta potential can be performed using Somolsky theory where surface conductivity is negligible. The another case is thick DL, thick diffusion layer, which corresponds to the system where DL is much larger than particle radius. The vast majority of dispersion is hydrocarbon media having inherently very low ionic strength satisfy this condition. So when the ionic strength is high, we will have thin DL. While if the ionic strength is very low, we have thick DL. But thin DL is most common than thick DL. These two asymptomatic cases allow one to picture at least approximately the DL structure around the spherical particles. A general analytical solution exists only for the low potential and it is called Debye-Huckel approximation. So how the mathematical expression of zeta potential is created or what is the mathematical expression of zeta potential? So the electric field strength inside the diffusion layer can be anywhere from 0 to over 10 k power 9 volts per minute. These steep electrical potential gradient are the reason for the importance of these DL. The theory for a flat surface, an asymmetrical electrolyte is referred as govi capman theory and it yields a simple relation between electrical charge in the diffusion layer and stream potential. As you can see in the equation which relates the diffusion layer with stream potential. There is a no general analytical solution for mixed electrolyte, curved surface and even the spherical particles. There is an asymptometric solution for a spherical particle with low charge diffusion layer. In the case when electric potential over diffusion layer is less than 25 millivolts, this is called Debye Huckel approximation hole. It yields the following equation for the electric potential and a spherical diffusion layer as a function of distance r from the particle center. You can see this equation which correlate electrical potential spherical diffusion layer as a function of distance r from particle center. There are several asymptomatic model which play an important role in theoretical development associated with interfacial diffusion layer. Mathematical expression of zeta potential as we have discussed there there are two type of model one is thin diffusion layer model other is thick diffusion layer model. So, in thin diffusion layer model, it is assumed that diffusion layer is much thinner than colloidal particle or capillary radius. This restricts the value of Debye length and particle radius is k alpha very very much greater than 1 and this model offers tremendous simplification from many subsequent applications. The theory of electrophoresis is just one example of it. Theory of electroacoustic phenomenon is another example. This thin layer is valid for most aqueous system 
because the Debye length is only a few nanometer in such cases. It breaks down only for nanocolloids in solution with ionic strength close to the water. The opposing model that is thick diffusion layer model assume that Debye length is longer than particle radius. So K alpha is less than 1. This model can be useful for some nanocolloid and nanopolar fluids where Debye length is much longer. The last model introduced is overlapped diffusion layers. This is an important in concentrated dispersions and emulsion when distances between particles become comparable with Debye length. So, now we have discussed how we can measure zeta potential. So, what is the significance of this zeta potential? So, measurement of zeta potential bring detail inside into the what is cause of the dispersion, what is aggregation or flocculations. It is applied improve the formation of dispersions, emulsions and suspension and is also have wide range of application in various industries such as ceramic industry, pharmaceutical industries, medicine, mineral processing, electronics and water treatment. So now we will discuss what is the limitation of Capman theory. So Capman theory describes rigid charge surface with a cloud of oppositely charged ion in the solution. The concentration of oppositely charged ion decreases with the distance from the surface and this is known as diffuse double layer. This theory is still not entirely accurate. Experimentally, the double layer thickness is generally found to be somewhat greater than calculated. The conceptually, it tends to be functional of the fact that both anion and cation exist in the solution and with increasing distance away from the surface the probability of ion of the same size as the surface charge will found within the double layer increases as well. Therefore, steam modification of diffuse double layer is important for the study. So, we will discuss in how the steam modifies the Campen theory. After limitation of Gauss Campen theory, there is a stream modification of diffuse bilayer. Gauss Campen theory assumes that ion behave as point charge which they cannot, and it assumes that there is a no physical limit for ion in their approach to the surface which is also not true. So, stream therefore modified the Goy Capman diffusion bilayer theory and stream modification of diffusion bilayer theory states that ion do not have finite size so cannot approach the surface closer than few nanoseconds. The first ion of Goy Capman diffusion double layer is not at surface but at some distance that is you can say d away from the surface. This distance will usually be taken as a radius for the ion. As a result the potential and the concentration of diffuse part of the layer is low enough to justify treating the ion as point charges. The steen also assumed that it is possible that some of the ion are especially absorbed by the surface in the plane D and the, this layer has become as known as stream layer. So you know that stream layer is, is basically an explanation for problems of the diffusion diffusible double layers. As we have seen that stream modifies the diffusion bilayer. So this diagram serves as a visual compromise uh, comparison of amount of counter ion in each of stream layer and diffusible layer. As you can see that 
we have excessive positive ion inside and excessive negative ion outside. After that, we have a strain layer where the ions which is opposite to the excessive negative ion is, uh, is present where, uh, which balance the surface uh, charge. And then we have as move away from the membrane, we can see that the, the charges present are basically neutralized. So, excess charge distribution is basically neutralized into even charge distribution. And you can see that moving away from the membrane, the effect of the charges are somewhat neutralized. So, it still modifies how the charge distribution away from the membrane is going to influence the membrane potential. Therefore, the potential will drop by YO minus YD over molecular condenser that is also known as helms holtz plane by YD over the diffusion layer and YD has become known to be zeta potential. Therefore, the diffusion layer is formed in order to neutralize the charge surface and in turn causes electrokinetic potential between the surface and any point in mass of suspending liquids. This voltage difference is on the order of millivolts and referred as a surface potential. The magnitude of surface potential is related to the surface charge and the thickness of double layers. As we leave the surface, potential drops roughly linearly with the stream layer and then exponentially through the diffusion bilayer and approaching zero at the imaginary boundary of diffusion layer. The potential curve is useful because it indicates the strength of ionic force between particles and the distance at which this force come into play. A charged particle will move with a fixed velocity in a voltage, voltage field that is known as electrophoresis. The particle mobility is related to dielectric constant and viscosity of surrounding liquid to the electrochemical potential at the boundaries between moving particle and the liquid. This boundary is called slip plane which is usually defined as the point where stream layer and diffuse layer meets. The relationship between zeta potential and surface potential depends on the level of ion in the solution as we have discussed in the figure which represents the change in the charge density through the diffuse layer. One source considered to be rigidly attached to the collides while diffusion layer is not. As a result, the electrical potential at this junction, which we are saying is slip plane, is related to the mobility of the particle and is called zeta potential. Although zeta potential is an intermediate value and is sometimes considered to be more significant than surface potential as far as electrostatic repulsion is concerned. So, we have discussed about membrane potential, we have discussed about how zeta potential and strain potential are important for membrane potential calculations. So, membrane potential is a voltage difference between inner and outer part of the membrane while physiological resting potential of the most of the cell is negative and that is because of unusual or uneven transport of some molecules or some ions across the membrane. We have seen that how electrochemical gradient, electrochemical gradient present on the membrane is mainly created by movement of ion. For example, if you see electrochemical gradient of inner mitochondrial membrane, you will find that one side is because of movement of proton, there is a pH change, so chemical gradient arises. Because of positive charge on the proton, there is a 
charge difference so electrochemical gradient is created so electrochemical gradient is also created because of the movement of ion so there is a electrochemical gradient there is a potential on the membrane that is known as membrane potential there is a because of the arrangement of different ions on the surface of the membrane we have zeta potential we have a strain potential and we have also discussed how different methods that is used to calculate the different potential present in the membrane and we have also discussed what are the significance of different potential that is used to explain the membrane and explain the membrane functions such as nerve impulse transmitter and others functions of the membrane.